Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Garmin Dash Cam 55 as well as installation in two vehicles. But first, let's take a look and see what's in the box. The Garmin comes well packaged. You can see we have a camera with protective film on it. We have a magnet with an adhesive strip we're attaching to the dash. We have an extra adhesive patch. We have your cigarette lighter power cord, which is 19 feet long. We have a USB connection that is 19 inches long. And some basic directions. So let's compare the camera to a GoPro. The camera dimensions for the Garmin are two and a quarter inches wide, one and five eighths inches tall, and 13 sixteenths in thickness. And if we compare the two side by side, the garment is just a little bit wider, not wider, but uh, narrower. Probably instead of two and a quarter, it's maybe an eighth inch difference. The resolution on the camera can be set at 720. 1080 or 1440p. It comes with an 8 gigabyte card. Some of the features include red light and speed camera warnings, which you can get through a subscription service on the Garmin website. The unit also does forward collision and lane departure warnings, has voice control, so you can tell that take a snapshot or time-lapse photography for those long trips. Start and stop as well. Incident detection can be saved on your card. It is Wi-Fi enabled. And if you look in your apps section and go to Verb, V-I-R-B, you can find the Garmin app for your Wi-Fi connection. Since it does come with an 8 gig card, you may find that recording time is not as long as you'd like. The unit will take up to a 64 megabyte card or gigabyte card. And you want to make sure that is a class 10 card. There isn't much that comes with the unit in the way of instructions. But one thing they will tell you is that when you're going to attach to your windshield, you have to give the sticky mount 24 hours to cure before you actually hang your unit. In the Garmin booklet itself, it comes in a variety of languages. And about the only thing it tells you is some cautions on where uh, to store your unit. They, they don't want you to keep it in direct sunlight for a prolonged period of times because they have had some problems with the units malfunctioning so if you're not going to be using it uh, you know for overnight or in a garage somewhere for cases where it might get bumped just take your unit off of its mount store it in the glove compartment or take it with you for mounting First thing we're going to do is clean the windshield and you want to check your state to see if it has any regulations on where you are permitted to mount your camera. In Pennsylvania, for example, you may mount it in the lower left or lower right corners of the windshield or somewhere up around the center and you can see on a lot of cars 
they may have some uh, webbing antenna stuff wires you know make sure before you're going to mount your unit that you turn it on and make sure you have a clear view up ahead and you don't get any of um, whatever this applied stuff is up here make sure that's not in your view so you notice when you first turn on your unit you have a menu to go through your bottom button is your selection American English Hit the bottom button to agree camera placement you can select where you're going to be mounting record audio is up at the top we want to do that again in Pennsylvania if you're recording audio uh, your passengers have to agree that they are being recorded so that's again something else to check up at the top is a menu button and so you can go to your gallery voice commands go to settings We want to hit enable. Okay, Garmin, take a picture. And there we have a picture saved to our file, which we can look at later. So you can go ahead and go through all the uh, menu settings. You got driver assistance. We have forward collision. Go alerts. So again, you can go on YouTube and there are other reviewers that will give you a lot of detail on how to do this. The Garmin instructions that come with your camera totally miss out on giving you any direction on how to do this. So for now, we're just going to go up here and we're going to figure out where it is that we want to place the camera so that we don't get any of that dot pattern in our view. And there you can kind of see it starting to come into the right corner. So we want to be to the left of that and we'll go ahead and start our mounting. All right, now we're going to peel our stick, sticky plastic off. mount the camera and pull that off push that on there good and tight and we'll come back to that and hang our camera permanently in 24 hours so the next thing we're going to be doing is running our wire along the top edge of the, the ceiling structure and for that I made myself a little wooden pry bar kind of tool and that's just to help lift the material back enough to get my wire started you can also use that to push your wire up through there just work that across the top Here we have a curtain airbag, so we want to avoid that. And so here what we're going to do is run this down behind the molding and find a path to take it behind the glove box to the floor. So we've run our wire down along the side and now we'll go underneath 
the glove box and fasten it up in there and bring it back out to our cigarette lighter. And so finishing up our installation, cigarette lighter down underneath. And that runs under the air vents back here at install one zip tie to hold it up. Any excess wire was bundled up and just tucked up under the inside. And there's our corners. And that's it. Now we're going to move on to our next vehicle, which will be a Ford C-Max. So our next car is a Ford C-Max, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pick our location, make sure we have a clear line of sight, that we don't pick up any windshield obstructions. Clean the windshield, and we'll mount it. Now on the C-Max, we have quite an obstruction in the middle. And if we look at the camera, really the best place to put this is up here. With the C-Max, you have two cigarette lighter connections. One is in your center console. That is operated by your ignition, so it is not on unless your engine is on. Your other connection, which has 12 volts at all times, is in the center. And what I determined was that if we try to go from the left side to the right and down, I don't have enough cord to come back up into the compartment. I would only have enough to come to here, and I would have to run it across the floor. So what we're going to do is come down the left side, and see what we can do about getting it into the console. All right, so we run this up behind our headliner. Make sure we have enough cord. Put that behind our plastic. And then down our side molding. So we're going to finish running this down the side and under the rocker panel. What we're going to do is see if we can reach the center console by going diagonally underneath the seat. All right, we'll fish this across. pull that up from the other side. So what I ended up with is some gaffer's tape that I installed so I could run that around the corner and then back behind the first leg bracket and then that comes up here and I have plenty of line to either connect into the center console or go up to the middle. So that is the install for a 2015 Forerunner and a 13 C-Max. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up. 
We'll see you next time.